All right, Shalom Akiam, all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Mahar Chapadash, double honors unto the apostles of great millstone and peace and blessings to the brethren out there that's doing the work up Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, in true faith and sincerity. This lesson is going out to all you out there who think that you don't have to listen to the words of the Most High or that the Bible is a played out book that only applied back in the day or that it never had any importance. Yeah, this lesson is going out to you. So, First and foremost, we're going to go to 2 Ezra chapter 8, verse 3. It says, there be many created, but few shall be saved. And first and foremost, this is going to the Hebrew Israelites because we're the only ones whose salvation is slated for in these last days. So there's, there's many, and Israel is all over the world, scattered across the four corners of the globe. So there'll be many Hebrew Israelites that were created, but only one third. That's 33.3333 percent and that means two-thirds must be destroyed and the reason why is because you negroes latinos native americans who predominantly make up the nation of israel do not want to conform to the words and the ways of yahweh by hashem yahweh shai you want to continue uh following in the deception of this devil the so-called white man edom and he's going to lead you to your destruction and, and this is why the scripture said there will be many created, but few shall be saved because only a few will Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah deal with and, and, and lead down that path to righteousness through his holy, uh, by his Holy Spirit, through Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, his only begotten son. And, and, and it takes it takes that. It takes those those two entities. You're going to have to have the, the faith of Yahweh Shai to believe that his blood was shed for your for the remission of your sins as a Hebrew Israelite. And then the, the Holy Spirit is going to have to be dealing with you. Because if you got one and, and, and don't have the other, salvation is it's impossible. So both elements have to be working hand in hand. You can't have one and not the other. But... That's, that's the scripture I want to start with. So just going into that, we're going to jump here to John 1 and 1. Then just to show this, that you have to be absurd and a, and a complete idiot. Well, especially for you grape juice drinking. Well, I ain't going to give you that honor. You, you grape Kool-Aid drinking Christians because y'all have been sipping on Esau's Kool-Aid to, to believe when he tells you that the law is done away with. When it tells you that, oh, the, the Old Testament or the Old Covenant doesn't apply. Yeah, there's, the, there's some things concerning the priesthood that priesthood is done away with. The law, statutes, and commandments are still in effect. They are eternal. As the Most High is, so is his word. Or so are his law, statutes, and commandments. So anyway, John 1 and 1 states that in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God or power. And the word was God or power. So it says the same was in the beginning with power. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. And that's the point. All things were made by him, including you. You Christians, all nations, you, you Goryum, Goryum, uh, uh, you, you heathen nations. All things, everything you turn in your immediate environment, that, anything outside of your immediate environment, the heavens, the constellations, the, the, the planets, all things were made by him. So that's including you. So how is it that, that you can believe being created by the word that you can have any fullness, any satisfaction, any joy or, or any, let alone righteousness, outside of his word, including life. How do you think you're going to have life lead, leading into salvation without the word, without the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah, when we were made by the word? And, and this is why you, as, as Hebrew Israelites, y'all have all these questions. Y'all have all these questions, you know, when things go down. You think you got a beat on life till your son go out there and get gunned down by the police or some thug run up on him and blow his head off. 
Then you got questions. Lord, why? Why, Lord? Then you got questions because you don't understand. You have no understanding because you are operating and living your life in violation of the, the, the very words of Yahweh Bashim and Yahweh Shai. And you fell for the, the prosperity doctrine and you fell for all, all the nonsense that comes with church. Church, so-called, not the true and living body of Yahweh Shai, but these haunted houses. And then when things go awry, you know, there's a death in the family or, you know, you lose a job. It's just something as simple and trivial as losing a job. You lose your mind. You bug out. And you want to know why. You don't understand why. Because you don't get into this word. And because you don't get into this word, you live a life that's outside of this word where there is no prosperity. There is no prosperity outside of the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. There, and there definitely is no life. So let's go here. And, and we're going to go to the book of Genesis, Salakia. We're going to go to the book of Genesis. And this is chapter 1. And we'll go to verse 26. It says, And God, which God there is referring to the Allah Hayyim. If you go into the Hebrew and look that word God up, you will see Allah Hayyim, which is God's plural. That's God's in a plural sense because it was Yahweh Shai and, the, and, the, and he had a, a, a host with it, a certain host, which we're not going to get into that, but there were certain angels with Yahweh Shai. And it says, and, and the Allah Hayyim said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fishes or the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth okay and all your biblical scholars get this wrong because they don't understand what that image is the image of God or the Allah first and foremost came from the image of Yahweh the Father that image is righteousness which comes through the law statutes and commandments so when he said let us make man in our image first and foremost well that's exclusive that's exclusively and I can say first and foremost goes to the son of men because you had back then what was classified by the sons of God so like you had back then what was classified as the sons of God they were the ones who was made in the image of God. That didn't, that didn't apply to all mankind. So you have to understand that. And when I speak about the Hebrew Israelites, you so-called, again, Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans who predominantly make up the nation of Israel and wherever else you have confusion of face Israelites scattered across the four globes. This pertains to you in these, in these last days. But just real quick to jump over just to prove that in Genesis chapter 6, and we're going to go straight to the point. Uh, verse 1, it says, And it came to pass, when man began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. So it, it, it's classifying another group of men right here. It says, When men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men. So that's two separate classifications of men. That the sons of God saw, and, and what made them the sons of God is that they were created in the image of the Allah of the gods. This is what made them the sons of God, the children of Israel of old. Who are referred to as the Adamites. So it says uh, that the sons of, of God saw that the daughters of men saw the daughters of men, that they were fair and, and, and they took them wise of all which they choose. And the point is that there were a such thing as the sons of God. They were the ones who were created in the image of God, meaning given the law, statutes, and commandments. Because when you read also Genesis uh, the second chapter, it tells you how the Heavenly Father 
breathed in, into Adam's nostrils and he became a living soul. And so basically that's that image. Now that breath and the image are the law, statutes, and commandments. So to you Hebrew Israelites, you two-thirds that y'all y'all flock into the harlot houses by troops every chance you get. And the first thing out your mouth is that the law was done away with. You, you understand how being created or, or having began in this image, do you think you're going to finish outside of that image? And that's what this truth is all about. That's the essence of this truth, us coming back into our proper capacity and our proper heritage to receive that image again. And Esau pr pr promotes, perpetuates all these false images, all these false ideologies, all these false doctrines out here to keep you from coming back to your true heritage and knowing that you are Hebrew Israelite. Hell, uh, Professor Griff and, and Nick Cannon just did an interview. And it, it, I can say it went viral. But they both acknowledging that they are the Hebrew Israelites. Now, I will say this, Nick Cannon may be the next Steve Harvey. He may be the next um, R. Kelly because he's coming out publicly with something that the establishment, that the elite don't want to be known. They do not want this knowledge to come out because this knowledge of awaken you Hebrew, Israel, you, you Hebrew Israelites, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and wherever else you are scattered, waking you up does not fit the status quo. It does not benefit this white boy and his society, his establishment. It goes against everything he's set up. And, and, and yeah, it's against him. This kingdom was established on lies, on falsehoods. So you waking up, just waking up, coming back to the truth. And they know that waking up is coming back to your power, man. And that the Most High is going to begin to deal with you and to restore you. Let me let me let me grab this to show you. So that is not beneficial at all to this white boy and, and to his uh to, to his agenda because his agenda is to take over the world and rule uh with with that one world order of unrighteousness, a one world order of wickedness. So this is the last thing he wants are the Hebrew Israelites waking up. But I'm going to get this just to prove this. And this is Psalms 107 verse 20. He sent, he being Yahweh, sent his word being Yahweh Shai, it says, and healed them. Now understand the implications of this. He sent his word and healed them. Implication being that without the word, we were sick. We were not clothed in our right mind. We were out there lost. We were destroyed, devoured, diseased. You name it. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So without the word, you are in destruction. You are being destroyed. And when you fall into the fallacies and the falsehoods of this devil, want to believe in Jesus the Christ, you want to believe that all nations can be saved? You want to believe that the Israelites are over there in Israel and that they have no idea where the rest of the 11 tribes are? You, you're being led to your destruction. This is about getting back to that image that we lost through the transgression of Adam and over time, that, that, that decay, that, that uh, degradation taking place to where we are now here, where we are, man. Gang banging thugs, pants sagging, thoughts, sluts, you know, whole nine yards, you name it, man. Anything negative. We're at the top of the list. We are the face of that. Disease and and and, and drug use. We're at the we the face of that. Betrayal, adultery, murder. We're the face of that. And, and we're promoted 
even though the devil is, is at the, you know, the core of all this, he's, he's the foundation of all this wickedness. He's promoted in a positive light because this is his kingdom. And he's going to continue to pro promote that image of him being righteous uh, until his, his agenda is established. But Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai is not going to establish that agenda. He's going to have a great upsetting from the Holy One himself. So, uh, I'm going to jump over here real quick. We're going to go and, and look at this. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. It says, But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the, of the Lord thy power, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, uh, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And this is where we are. And all you have to do is go and read through it. And this is a, a very detailed list. Lining out everything that you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are suffering from today. And I'm not going to go through that list. You know, for you, I can um, y'all already know. This is one of the first chapters that, that opens your eyes. So the Akiyon note, but if you're new to this thing and you're just coming across this, it would behoove you to read the whole chapter of Deuteronomy 28. Then jump over to Leviticus, the 26th chapter, and get some more. But it, it states, yeah, that if we didn't hearken unto the voice of Yahweh, our power, and took, took heed of his commandments, that the curses would overtake us. And this is why you're destroyed. This is why your sons and your daughters get gunned down in the streets. This is why we get taken to the court for child support. This is why we get taken to the court, period, over the trivial or the most minor of infractions. And, and our, what's the word, are subjugated to these, these draconian um, measures. Or, or, or draconian um, well I just leave it at measures because of these curses they've overtook us we've fallen out of that image and two thirds of you don't want to come back you want to stay conformed to this devil's image because you are following after his lies you're drunken of his wine and that wine is going to make you drunken so yeah, we are under all and every one of these curses that's written in the book of Deuteronomy 28. And the only way to be healed, referring back to Psalm 107 and 20, is that we get back into this word. The word is what, what created us. Therefore, it would, it would go to reason that the word would be the only thing to heal us, to repair us. You got niggas running around talking about reparations. The reparations are right here. This is the reparations. And that the most high grace is upon us for those of us who is for. Because grace is a gift. It's not given to everyone. But that is the reparation. You're looking for, for money. Money keeps you tied to this construct. Money keeps you tied to this society. That's why many of you will take the mark of the beast because of money. Money keeps you locked into the matrix. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying to, to denounce money because money is a defense. We need it. You got to wear clothes. You got to wash your ass. You need a roof over your head. You know? You got to get around, do your day-to-day -day thing. All that takes money. But for all people, they've made their life after the pursuit of money. That's their life, is to pursue money. And not to pursue the will of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, and to, to follow his word. And, and with that being said, I'm going to go here and bring out a few more scriptures. And uh, we're going to get out of here. All right.
So, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. <clears throat> Like it, I'm in the wrong book, but no problem. All right, so Yeah, so this is Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 12. It says, Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, said the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. Religion. That's referring to religion. All people have sought out religion which are broken cisterns that can hold no water, that water being the truth. 
So the Heavenly Father said, that's two evils. They have forsaken the living, the, the fountain of living waters. That's bad enough, but then they went and served these false gods, false religions. You know, you got all people who want to make themselves a god and worship themselves. And this is what's going on amongst Israel. But the only healing, the only, the you know, the only ones that are going to return unto life and find their salvation are the ones that come back to the truth of this book. That, that are going to be conformed to this word. You know, because in Ephesians, the fourth chapter, it speaks about uh, being conformed to the to the uh, image. And I bring this scripture out all the time. Uh, uh, that fullness of the stature of Yahweh Shah Masiach. And that's the only way. And Yahweh Shah Masiach comes in the volume of this book. And that is the only way. So this is Ephesians 4 and uh, 14. It says that we henceforth be no more children. Now, let me jump up because it's 13 is the point. Ephesians 4 and 13, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of Yahweh unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Masiach. You know? So, yeah, that's what it is, man. And, and, and unless you do that, there is no hope. You're in violation. You're in violation of the very law or the word that created you. You understand? So, yeah, there is no hope. There is no hope, man. So with that, man, I pray that you brothers were edified. All praises, honor, and glory again goes to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahara Chakadash, double honors unto the apostles, a great millstone and peace and blessings to you, Aki. I'm out there doing the work of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, in true faith and in sincerity. So to the next lesson, you brothers stay up. Much love. Shalom.